an eye on the Tigers news. I'm Josh Yarden. Thanks for joining us again and checking in with us for the news we've been following for you. The United States has made a preliminary conclusion that Russia knew in advance of Syria's chemical weapons attack last week, but has no proof of Moscow's involvement, a senior U.S. official said Monday. The official said that a drone operated by Russians was flying over a hospital as victims of the attack were rushing to get treatment. Hours after the drone left, a Russian-made fighter jet bombed the hospital in what American officials believe was an attempt to cover up the usage of chemical weapons. The U.S. officials said the presence of the surveillance drone over the hospital couldn't have been a coincidence, and that Russia must have known the chemical weapons attack was coming and that the victims were seeking treatment. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson issued an ultimatum to Russia on Tuesday, side with the U.S. and like-minded countries on Syria or embrace Iran militant group Hezbollah and embattled Syrian leader Bashar Assad, as he embarked on a trip to Moscow following urgent meetings in Italy with top diplomats. Tillerson said it was unclear whether Russia had failed to take seriously its obligation to rid Syria of chemical weapons or had merely been incompetent. Justice Neil Gorsuch took his place in history Monday as the newest addition on the bench of the Supreme Court, restoring a narrow conservative majority and mar marking a much-needed political victory for President Donald Trump. Gorsuch was sworn in during a sun-soaked ceremony in the Rose Garden, nearly 14 months after the seat was left vacant with the sudden death of Justice Antonin Scalia. The oath was administered during the White House ceremony by Justice Anthony Kennedy, whom Gorsuch once served as a law clerk. A smiling Trump stood behind his nominee, Gorsuch, joins the court that is often the final arbiter for presidential policy. A man walked into his estranged wife's elementary school classroom in San Bernardino and opened fire without saying a word, killing her and an eight-year-old student before shooting himself in a murder-suicide that spread panic across a city still recovering emotionally from a terror attack just 15 months ago. A nine-year-old student was also critically wounded. He and the boy who died were behind their special education teacher, Karen Elaine Smith, who was 53, the target of the man she had married months earlier, police said. Staffers knew Cedric Anderson, who had been estranged from his wife for about a month, and he got into the school by saying he had to drop something off for Smith, officials said. Several minutes after a passenger recorded a video watched around the world that showed security officers dragging another passenger off an overbooked United Express flight at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. A smaller snippet of video showed an even more troubling scene. There stood the passengers, who had been dragged on his back to the front of the plane, appearing dazed as he spoke through bloody lips and blood that had spilled onto his chin. Quote, I want to go home, I want to go home, he said. The treatment of the passenger on Sunday night prompted outrage and scorn on social media and anger among some of the passengers on the flight as the unidentified man was evicted. We missed a record yesterday by just one degree, but some changes are on the way. Here's Alexis with the forecast. We skipped right over spring yesterday and into summer with high temperatures hitting 81 degrees, just short of the record of 82. We start our cloudy, with some, our cloudy day with some breaks of sun for our Tuesday, and any heating of the atmosphere during the morning and early afternoon will lead to some thunderstorms. Some of those storms could pack a punch as a cold front hits the area, dropping our temperatures into the low 40s tonight. We clear out on Wednesday, but the temperatures will be noticeably coo cooler, some 40 degrees cooler than yesterday. Things begin to move toward normal on Thursday as highs approach the mid-50s. Remember, the normal highs for this time of year are in the upper 50s. It looks right now that the upper 50s are a better bet on Friday with sunny skies. Longer range data shows a gradual warm up for Easter weekend with highs approaching 70. That's a look at the forecast. Have a great day. I'm Alexis. The Chicago Cubs celebrated their long awaited World Series championship last night. Here's Mr. Charbonneau with the sports. Finally, a banner moment at Wrigley Field. The Chicago Cubs raised their 2016 World Series championship flag Monday night, delighting a raucous crowd that waited through a long rain delay for a moment more than a century in the making. Hall of Famers Ryan Sandberger, Fergie Jenkins, and Billy Williams raised banners for the franchise's two previous championships in last year's National League pennant. First baseman Anthony Rizzo had the initial honors for the drought-busting title flag before the rest of the Cubs took their turn. 
U.S. Soccer unveiled a historic joint bid with Mexico and Canada to host the 2026 World Cup. The three countries revealed their plans Monday on the 102nd floor of the World Trade Center in Manhattan. They will now have to convince FIFA, soccer's governing body, as to why the World Cup should return to the North America for the first time since the United States hosted it in 1994. Now, there had been some concerns that President Trump's desires to build a wall on the U.S.-Mexico border and his recent controversial executive order that barred immigration from predominantly Muslim countries would hurt that bid. Locally, Mexico Tennis, they made it two in a row to open its season with a 6-1 thumping of Oswego. John Ocker, Joe Ocker, and Joey Damacola, well, they were singles winners, while in doubles, Edwards and Yurden, Pilo and Pullen, and Turo and Mullen were winners for the 2-0 Tigers. In boys track, Jace Eastman and Logan Burrows went 1-2 in the long jump at the ESM specialty track meet yesterday. Now, Mexico baseball and softball both were on the losing end of a lopsided game yesterday at JD, and both teams come back to take their on the Red Rams this afternoon at home, weather permitting. And finally, the girls lacrosse team, they lost to Auburn yesterday 17-4. That's it in sports. We hope you have a great day. The senior class is putting on a glow dance on Friday, April 28th. You can buy $5 pre-sale tickets from any of the class officers. Abby Garrett, Marissa Higby, Caitlin Sperling, Olivia Moretti, Aaron Gilmore, or Emily Blunt. The junior prom will be held on Saturday, May 13th from 7 to 11 p.m. at Alex's on the Water. Tickets can be purchased for $50 from Mr. McKenna in room 113. That's all for us today. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Josh Yurden for staff of Eye on the Tigers News. Have a great day and look for us again on Thursday.